Okay, this is uh, Dr. Barry again, and we're looking at our classroom observation instrument and our teacher performance system. Uh, notice or remember that the uh, first domain that we looked at was uh, perspective and worldview. Does the teacher have a big perspective that they are developing in the life of their students over the course of this lesson? And then we looked at their planning and objectives and use of objectives. So the third domain that we look at is their instructional practice. What's actually happening in the classroom? And how does the uh, teacher operate? Um, let's look again at the um, at these levels of performance. Remember uh, the big picture, you can look at more details in the teacher uh, standards, and uh, but the big picture is you're trying to see whether the teacher is beginning to figure it out, but needs direction to know what the next steps are. They're not quite sure. Um, or if they're working on it and they're growing, but they can reflect on their practice and they have a plan and that's developing. Or is the teacher secure and flexible um, in the implementation of their instruction, seamless and in running of their class? And then what about those few teachers and few times where uh, they are uh, so seamless and uh, secure that they can also reflect on their practice and they know why, they know why um, it's effective, why they're effective, and they can share that with others. And so that's what we're looking for. Those are the big picture ideas for these levels of performance. Now, in instructional practice, the big picture here is that we see a variety of activities, a variety of practice. Teachers do a lot of different things and different teachers do different things, but we, should, we shouldn't see a teacher always doing exactly the same thing in their classroom. So does the teacher use a variety of practices to engage students? Now, these practices that a teacher tries to use, do they understand how to implement them? Does the teacher implement those instructional practices as well? And we also look at assessment, which should be a very integral part of instruction, not just simply um, one time or events that occur occasionally. Does the teacher gather information from their students to adjust their instruction, provide feedback on a regular basis? So let's look at these elements. Now clearly the first element you'll see if you are looking at your uh, teacher observation instrument within this domain is that the teacher communicates instruction well. They communicate their concepts, they communicate their instructions clearly so that, uh, so that they, so the students understand. Students have a map to follow. They know what they're supposed to do. They're not sitting there thinking, oh, I don't know. What am I supposed to do? What, what's going on here? And so, uh, so that's, that's the first element. The second element is over the course of the class, the teacher is using their time well. It makes sense, the order of events, that they have uh, happen and they have occur in their classroom. The activities that the students are doing, it's logical, it's effective. It makes sense that they did it in that order and they're attending to time. They're making sense, they're using their whole period of instruction. They're not finishing early with nothing and the students have nothing to do or they're not getting caught by uh, the end of class. They're bringing the class to closure. So you're looking at the sequence of elements and the pace that they provide. And is this, and then you're thinking, is this teacher a beginning? Do they need some help to figure that out? Did they have some issues that arose 
but they know what those issues are and they can work on them. So they're developing. Are they secure? Or does can this teacher articulate why they did everything when they did it and why it was effective so that they can help others? You'll notice the second idea is, is active learning. Now, active learning is something that's in every system that you look at. This is a key to students' learning and growth and development, that they are actively engaged in what's going on. Now, that can mean that you're using a uh, direct instruction, but you're using elements within that direct instruction to engage students. But generally, when you think of active learning, you're thinking about students thinking or doing something or building or active. They're not passive. And so, again, you're looking at these elements that, um, that are, are defined um, within our systems. You'll see in active learning, um, and that's talked about in the Cambridge uh, guides. Uh, Vanderbilt has a lot of ideas uh, and resources as well. So it's a broad range of teaching strategies which engage students as active participants in their learning. You can see that uh, I've given here uh, something that you can look at, a, a graph you can look at that talks about, you know, sometimes active learning are, is very simple. Just a pause for, inflect, for refre reflection. And sometimes it's very complex, like, um, like some sort of theater activity uh, where they're uh, role playing. So, uh, so it can mean a lot of different things. So that's what you're, but what you're looking for is that you, the teacher is engaging their students. Their students aren't just passive uh, in the class. Now, assessment. Um, we, <clears throat> we debated a little bit on whether to include summative assessment in the classroom observation. Summative assessment um, is probably more appropriate for your unit plans uh, because it's not something that necessarily takes place in every single lesson. But formative assessment is something that is ongoing. The teacher should always be uh, finding ways of collecting information from their students and uh, giving their students feedback or taking it as feedback for their own instruction. Should be integrated and ongoing part of instruction. It should be actual collection of data. <clears throat> Sometimes that may include uh, informal group data like a choral response, students writing on a whiteboard to show something, um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Those really are formative assessment pieces, but ideally at some point the teacher should be collecting formal data from each student that they can use uh, both to adjust their instruction and also to support students. Uh, now that could be, there are lots of different ways. As we've been online, many teachers have learned more about apps that you can use. There are things that lower school students, younger students can do through Seesaw. Uh, there are many different apps online uh, that you could use to collect data, quizzes, Quizlet, and so forth. So um, teachers uh, should be looking for ways through exit tickets or other ways of collecting data. And you should also see in observing in the classroom that the teacher is using that data if they're collecting information, they may adjust their instruction or their activity on the fly because of the data that they are collected. And they're also using data that they're collected to support individual students. So formative assessment may be an area that many teachers need uh, support in fact, and uh, faculty development, uh, professional learning um, on. Now, closely related to this is uh, giving students feedback. So you, you should find teachers 
providing ways to give students feedback quickly and uh, in some timely fashion. Now this is an area that's often difficult for teachers to make sense of uh, because they're afraid, you know, how do I give every student feedback? And uh, so there's a balance here. But uh, teach students need this feedback. Now, um, Grant Wiggins had an article where he talked about um, aspects of, of good feedback. And uh, there are other frameworks you can look at well, but timely. Um, objective referenced. When a student gets feedback, they know what it's related to. They know what objective that they're learning, how it relates. It's clear and transparent and user-friendly uh, that naturally leads into actionable steps. They're giving students information on what step to take next based on their understanding. Consistent uh, just means that teachers should have some standard ways that they use to give students feedback so students know that they're receiving feedback. They know what's expected of them and that it's ongoing. So it occurs often. So you're looking at ways teachers give feedback to their students in a way that the students know what they need to do next and uh, can take action on that. Now, this is a big area, um, and there's two objectives here on the instrument. One is simply using a variety of instructional approaches. A teacher should ideally, within a class period, do a variety of different things with their students. Uh, have the students you know, break up their activity, um, and that helps them engage, better engage their students. But also, we need to use best practice for any instructional approach employed. So, uh, but what is best practice? How do we make sure this is not the objective, uh, of the, the subjective objective in our observation instrument? Well, it means that you need to be thinking about the practices that a teacher employs and what it means to do that well. You know, if a, if a teacher is using direct instruction, what does that mean? Well, their instruction should be well planned, clearly communicated. Uh, ideally, they should have visuals, visual aids, uh, that uh, their presence and delivery should not be distracting. That they use some way to engage their students, either through stories or humor, that they stop periodically and ask questions or use other types of interaction techniques. Now, ideally, lectures should be short. No more than, depending on the age of the student and the experience of the student, five to 15 minutes at the most. Even the best students have difficulty learning from lecture after 15 minutes. Consider chunking their activities, breaking it up with other activities. Maybe consider flipping the classroom, recording a lecture that students watch outside of class, and then you have the opportunity to discuss when they return. So those are the types of things that you're looking at. Collaborative uh, groups. You know, that they're, if they're putting the students into groups, is there a clear purpose for the activity? Are the groups intentionally created to be consistent with that purpose? You're using homogeneous groups, heterogeneous groups. Are the students choosing or are they assigned? You know, that all of that's related to achieving the purpose. Are the instructions clear and understood? Is the group going to sit there just chatting, not knowing what to do? Do they understand their role in the group? Often it's helpful to assign students specific roles. Are the students engaged and contributing? Are all the students engaged and contributing? Uh, does the group have an expected product or end goal that they have to contribute to or turn in at the end? Is individual and group accountability evident? Is the teacher checking up? Is the teacher actively engaged? Is the teacher walking around monitoring, instructing, facilitating the activity? Does the teacher attend to process? Are they training what it means to participate or how it means to participate in a collaborative group? 
I once had a uh, college president tell me, I asked him, you know, what do you want our students to do, to be able to do when they go to your school? And he said, I want them to be able to read and make sense of complex text, participate in discussion, and to be able to participate in collaborative activities in teams. So this is very important. And there are some other resources that I have in the PowerPoint that are available for you. And other things like classroom discussion. How do you lead a good classroom discussion? Well, I have a whole bunch of information on this particular slide, but there's a lot there uh, that you can look at. How, uh, how do you facilitate? Does the teacher know how to facilitate a discussion so that more than just one or two students is involved? So that you get the students involved in meaningful ways and students know how to participate in that, in that um, uh, discussion. Now, a lot of that has to do with your questioning strategies. So it's important that you identify, and you'll notice on the instrument, there's a drop-down menu for you to identify the instructional approach that you're evaluating, that you're observing. And then you want to go to some of these ideas and other resources to make sure you understand what good practice in that instructional um, approach should, um, what it should look like. And you can evaluate it reasonably. Are they beginning, developing, secure? Is this the teacher that you need to be doing, have doing professional learning in direct instruction in collaborative groups? Are they the leading teacher that you're looking for? Okay, so that's the third domain looking at their instructional practice.